So we released a video a few months ago on this channel about Ridgeburn's Rally and trying to work out if it is truly the greatest sim rally game of all time. And one of the questions we received a lot of was how do I play Ridgeburn's Rally? The game is from like 2004, how do I install it and get set up? Well, today you've come to the right place. I'll be going through the game, how to get set up on the game and some tips and tricks if you've never played it before. Let's get into it. So if you're new to it, Richard Burns Rally is the rally sim of rally sim games. This game was released in 2004 by Warthog Games. And while it wasn't received like overwhelmingly positive at the time, it's grown a cult following over how deep the physics model is and the amount of different rally elements that are simulated within the game. So much so that the game is actually played religiously today. And when it comes to hardcore multiplayer rally sim racing, this is the sim to play. The downside to Richard Burns Rally though is that it was released in like 2004 so it is a little tricky to set up and get running on modern PCs. Today I'll be going through everything you need to get started on Richard Burns, spoiler alert, probably a steering wheel <laughs> and then we'll go through the install, some add-on things that I recommend and then we'll get to driving and what to drive. As well. Starting with what you need, the upside of having a game from like 2004 is that it runs pretty damn well on nearly any PC. You will probably need a steering wheel though. Uh, you can run this on like a controller or on keyboard, but I highly recommend getting some sort of wheel with full speed pack. And there's also fairly good implementation of the clutch in this game as well. So if you do have it, I recommend having a pedal set with all three pedals. You'll also need a PC as well. You could totally grab your PlayStation 2 and Xbox if you have like a copy of the game on those consoles. But to get all the mods and enhancements in online rally, you will be needing to use a computer. So with your PC, it needs to be a computer and it needs to have 100 gigabytes of hard drive space. Why? Well, turns out there is a lot of user created stages over the last like two decades that have been made. So the install is like ridiculously huge. You can install Richard Benz Rally without the user made stages if you don't have the space, but I would recommend getting all of them. It does get kind of difficult if you're doing online rallies because you may have some stages, but not others. So just get all of them, that's what I recommend. Now that you've got a PC and a steering wheel, let's get into the install. What I recommend in current year 2023 is to install the Rally Sim Fans mod, which is made by a very cool, very dedicated Hungarian team. The links are below for the actual mod, um, but if you jump on rallysimfans.hu and head to the downloads, you should be able to find it as well. The Rally Sim Fans mod includes the entire Richard Burns game with the two official patches included, which means that you don't need to use your physical disc copy of Richard Burns Rally, which you should own as well. Included in the installer is Next Generation Physics, which is an overhaul of the physics engine, a pace note, editor, UI improvements, the support for custom tracks. There's actually a huge amount of stuff included in this mod, but it's all installed as one thing. It's actually it's really, really good. Now as Richard Burns Rally and this mod has become increasingly popular over the last few years, you will need to download this game using a torrent file. If you've never torrented before, I would Google it, <laughs> but this is totally fine. And you can find some information on the torrenting process on the Rally Sim Fans website as well. Alongside that more in-depth guide that I recommend watching, we'll start by downloading a torrent file for all the installer files, and then we'll download the Rally Sim Fans installer app directly from the website as well. Once they're both downloaded, which will take a hot minute, start the installer app, and then you'll select where you want to install the game. In this case, I have a folder directly on my D drive for the game. And you'll also want to select where you've saved all the torrent files that you downloaded as well. Then you select full installation and you'll be able to deselect any options that you don't need. The ones that jump out for me is support for VR. Most of us won't be using it, so you don't need it unless you do, in which case select it. You'll also get to choose from a ludicrously long list of stages. It's like almost 400 or over 400 stages or something. It's great. It's overwhelming. I would download all of them, but you can select individual ones as well if you'd like. You then get another screen to select some options, then a confirmation screen, and then we can install. This will take a hot minute as well, and then you are all installed and good to go. So once you are installed, you want to open up the Rally Sim Fans launcher. Now, the first thing I recommend doing is creating an account on the Rally Sim Fans website and logging into it on the launcher. This will get you able to do multiplayer skids in the online rallies, which is 
kind of the most fun part, I think. I then go to the screen and graphics and set up your resolution and things, then head to cockpit and dashboard. You can set up if you want freedom units or normal units. You can also set up your FOV and dashes. I'm running 0.9 as my FOV for my single screen that is jammed right up against my wheelbase. And I have the default full digi dash and the full two columns gauger plugin as well. On the controls page, I have all my pedals inverted, which you may need to do if you need to. And now I generally set my wheel rotation to around 360 degrees in the profiler, but it might be different for your wheel. So I recommend getting into game and giving it a test and playing around with the rotation to see, see what wheel rotation you like. Now, when you run the game, you will need to be connected to the internet for the first time that you run a new car and some other times as well. And the game is constantly downloading a bunch of information from the server. I think it's like downloading the car and some other things as well. So make sure you're connected to the internet as well. Now, one of the cool things with a modded version of Richard Burns Rally is that we can edit pace notes to be whatever we want. And if you jump in game and open the pace note editor, you can completely rearrange, change or rewrite the pace notes or whatever stage you'd like. It's a pretty in-depth process. And if you're into that sort of level of simulation, this is a heap of fun. You can even do like a full recce of a stage and make your own pace notes. What I recommend for the vast majority of us though is grabbing a pace note pack as the default pace notes are like not so good. They kind of say like slight left and easy right, which is like, I don't think very useful. Jane Lahanen's pace note pack is amazing and you can download it in Finnish or English as well as selecting if you want numbers for corner tightness and if you want like the direction or the radius first, highly recommend it. I actually, I totally forgot, but I actually use a different pack on top of this. It's like Loopies, Lupus Pace Notes pack. It's really good. I've put a link for this down below as well. There's more information on their website, but uh, that's what I recommend. Once you're in Richard Burns Rally and set up, you can start practicing. I normally do a few time trial stages to really get my head switched on every time I play the game before I jump into online rally mode and see how I stack up. Getting used to Richard Burns Rally is often a bit tricky. If you're jumping over from like dirt or WRC, the cars generally are a bit more slippery and they want to go sideways quite quickly. They break traction faster. You'll also have to manage three pedals as well and actually do things like pop the clutch in when the car is spinning out so you don't have to restart the engine and being aware of the engine locking if you're like using the handbrake. There's a couple of weird things that takes a while to get your head around if you're not used to it. The main thing that most people see coming from the other games as well is that cars generally get way more damaged way, way quicker. And what is a minor scuff in EAWRC is a rally ending hit in Richard Burns Rally. So this sim really teaches you to drive carefully and make sure that you don't hit anything. A single hit can ruin everything, especially a hit to the front of the car. If you do damage your radiator, your engine will expire like a minute later and then it's GG's. There's no going back, there's no restarting or anything. There's been so many rallies where I've been driving along and then I've doinked a tree with the front of my car like relatively gently and it's just like killed my whole rally. The other thing that's worth being aware of for people jumping from the other rally games is that there's no visual co-driver notes. I personally am a visual learner and I often find myself like automatically relying on the pictures of what corners are coming up and subconsciously tuning out the audio. In Richard Burns, you do not have that luxury. I found turning off the visual markers in EAWRC is way better for me to cross over between games. It forces me to constantly listen to the co-driver and stops me from messing up calls when I'm jumping between the games as well. So now that you're set up in Richard Burns Rally and driving along, you're probably wanting to get online and smack some randoms. The easiest way to do that is to jump into Hot Lap Ranking Board, but I would honestly recommend trying out Online Rally. Once you're in Online Rally, you can select from a huge amount of user-created rallies. At the top are the daily stages, which is where I probably recommend starting out. Jump in the daily stages and give them a go in a fairly slow car, and your brain will slowly catch up to how Richard Burns works and how to drive. Otherwise, you can select many of these online rallies and get stuck into them. 
The main one that a lot of content creators have been doing over the last two years, myself included, is a championship called Sim Rally Masters. You can find this on the championship page of Rally Sim fans. Once entered, you can compete in the rallies from the online rally section in game. There have been six rallies so far in 2023 and there is still one to go apparently before the end of the year. These rallies are stupidly long and feature really well thought out stage selections. One that I did earlier in the year was Rally Yukon Puebla, which was 69 stages, nice, over three legs, and once you start a leg, you have to keep going to the end of the leg. You can't even like turn off the game or anything. This was about six hours of on stage time, and I did it over a whole weekend without crashing once. It's one of the coolest things I've honestly done in sim racing. I felt such a big sense of accomplishment at the end of it. I ended up coming 36th in my trusty VW Golf. I was only an hour off the lead. It was great, I loved it. <laughs> I'd highly recommend giving this championship a go and some other similar ones once you're up and running. So that's a quick guide on how to play Richard Burns Rally. If you're a Richard Burns Rally expert and you think I missed anything or I got something incorrect or you've just got another tip for some new drivers, feel free to let us know in the comments. Otherwise, if you did like the video, you can leave a like and you can subscribe to Overtake for more sim racing and Richard Burns videos. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.